Hi, this is Peter Lo. This is the second video on the passive airflow technique. I also did a first video which was an introduction to uh, this particular uh, approach to stuttering. Uh, you can still watch it in YouTube under the name the passive airflow technique for stuttering. In this particular uh, video we are going to look at the cause of stuttering um, according to the views of Dr. Martin Schwartz who was a, a professor at the University of New York's Medical Center. You, um, well, in, in my opinion this particular view of stuttering uh, as to the cause seems to fit in with everything we know about stuttering and make sense. Okay, just a few words about me. I have stuttered since the age of about three or four, I think, and uh, I was very fortunate to have attended a few workshops by Dr. Schwartz in the early 80s, which is quite a long time ago. <laughs> Um, but that was the beginning of a journey for me uh, during which I improved my speech tremendously. I'm certainly not 100% fluent and probably never will be, um, but I've, I've really improved so much that I can do many more things than what I could do in, in the past. Um, Dr. Schwartz is the developer of the so-called passive airflow technique and uh, it really, in my opinion, is the best technique around. The reason why I am making these videos is because the passive airflow technique for some reason is not very well known and uh, it's really so important, I think, for people who stutter to get more information on this and on, on this whole approach to stuttering. Um, and also, um, I, I'm making this particular video on the cause because if, if you know what the problem is, then it's so much easier to deal with it, to handle it, to manage it. So uh, in this video I'm also going to actually apply the passive technique as I speak. I am applying it at the moment. You probably won't notice it, but I let out a very small stream of air before each phrase and I also slow the first syllables. Uh, but in a later video I will go into the details of the passive airflow technique. Um, some people have criticized the airflow technique in that it sounds too breathy like Marilyn Monroe who had these very pronounced uh, breathing, you know, that, that kind of thing. Uh, um, if, if you exaggerate it, it's going to sound breathy. And I find that beginning people tend to have very breathy uh, voices and uh, very breathy um, form of speaking, which, which uh, can sound very sexy as if you are a Magnum Monroe. But uh, if you are not, then you, you really shouldn't um, do that because that also sounds unnatural. So um, the airflow should be very, very passive. It should be short and sweet and it should not be really noticeable. 
So here on the left you can see where the vocal cords are situated in the larynx or voice box. On the right hand side you can see the vocal cords. They can be either open or closed depending on the type of sound spoken and their job is to produce sound so that we can speak. They vibrate because of the air flowing out of the lungs and these vibrations create the sounds with which we can speak. The vocal cords move very very fast and are moved by means of various sets of muscles. Speaking is a very complex fine muscle activity and so the coordination of these muscles has to be perfect. Right, now with people who stutter something else happens. It seems that that we have a set of very stress sensitive vocal cords. Our vocal cords are stress or tension sensitive and if the level of tension reaches a particular threshold level the vocal cords will tend to, to lock or freeze. Now um, keep in mind that that these vocal cords function very very fast. I'll try to, this is going to look a bit funny, but say for instance the, the vocal cords are, are, are my little fingers and they are they work in either the open or closed positions and they they move very 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 fast like this all the time as you speak as as I'm speaking now but when uh, the the ten tension levels reach a particular threshold level they will become a fix they they will actually lock or as it were freeze as dr schwartz calls it they, they, and they can freeze in either an open position or a closed or a more closed position. But they will just freeze because there are different sets of muscles working in different directions. Uh, the, the, this is what the what people who start to call this the the fear block. Uh, I mean, we've been talking so much about so-called block if you stutter. Well, that is the that is the block. The block is created in your larynx. Now, what happens when a person who is speaking gets this, this block? Well, he will still try to finish his word or phrase or sentence. And what but he, he won't be able to do so because this block is in his way. It's a next sound which cannot be spoken because your, your vocal cords have locked down. So what does the person do? Well, he struggles, he fights, he, he will do physically anything, as it were, to overcome that block. Now, Stuttering is really our way of overcoming a, a block on the following sound or word. So stuttering is what is called struggle behavior. It, for instance, if you uh, want to say, uh, say you want to say my, my name, Peter, um, say for instance you you find it very difficult to say the eh, the, the, the voice sound eh, of Peter, then you will most probably begin to repeat the P because the P is easier, maybe easier to say because it's, it's an unvoiced sound. You don't use your vocal cords if you say P. So you can close your lips and but but you can't go, go further because your vocal cords are locking as you want to say the E. So you say p, 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 and at last, at last you, you do get it out. You, you can't say Peter, 
because that struggle behavior and that that uh, stuttering does work to some extent. It, it, it is successful if you do it um, often enough or if you, uh, if, if you really force it then you, you can at last say Peter. So the struggle behavior, the, the stuttering does work um, and but unfortunately now there is um, the principle of conditioning and learned behavior those principles come in here and that these are principles of psychology it's it's called conditioning it means that if a particular behavior is is um, is rewarded then it is strengthened and it's uh, the more you do it the more it is strengthened and reinforced until it becomes a very firm habit which is hard to deal with especially if you begin stuttering while you're very young then you've stuttered for many years if you've reached um, an adult stage and then those conditioned behaviors those stutterings of the past have become deeply established in your subconscious it has become a deeply firmly conditioned reflex let's look at an example say for instance that your name is Paul most people tend to focus on the repeated sound as in p -p -p Paul so they think the problem lies with the P but very often the real problem lies with the sound following the repeated sound the repeated sound can actually be spoken so that's not the problem. It's the next sound which you can't say because your vocal cords have locked. So in this case the real problem is with the voiced sound or. Repeating the P is just this individual's way of trying to overcome the block on the O sound. So the real problem is not with the lips or the tongue or whatever it is inside the the throat it's in our larynx okay i think that's it for now if you need more information about this line of thinking you are most welcome to visit my blog or the facebook page of the airflow approach to stuttering uh, I will give details of the address in my last slide. Thank you very much for watching my video and I wish you all the best with your speech. Thank you very much.